Hello everyone and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. Today I've got some 1v1s to show you. And yeah, well let's go just go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, for these videos I use both of my war leaders and we'll go ahead and tackle the lower ranked one first because he's got less to see. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So uh this is a fight with a hunter. Uh this takes place on an entirely blue Edmores. As you can see he's got the relic buff for well both relic buffs. For rather the buffs are both relics. All three buff icons are on him. And you can see he's got a bunch of the outposts. Uh I think we've got Oh I guess we do have a couple one outpost in the mines or something. Um, but you know not a whole lot of audacity or anything. Uh, this guy really doesn't have any audacity worth speaking of. Uh, I tried to maneuver around these rocks a little bit. It doesn't really work. I don't manage to break a line of sight. So I just settle in and go for a direct healing route, which is what I should have done from the beginning. Trying to use the terrain would have been a decent idea. I, I should have stuck with the trees and not gone to the rocks, though, because the trees he can easily kill the ground. Uh, there I went ahead and interrupted the animation for Call of the Shadow so I could get to my shouting earlier and did my double heal. And I'm trying desperately to get some crits but uh, I'm just not having good luck at getting the crits which does influence quite a lot in this particular fight and matchup. Uh, there we go, that is uh, another application of crowd control which this hunter is doing a good job of applying his CC. Uh, there I go ahead and shout, get my heal off and it gets interrupted right there on my uh, attack and I go down. Still, all things considered, not so bad. Anyway, now we're with my regular standard war leader. This is one of those fight clubs at Good TA that just seems to pop up on land that all the people are using all the time. Uh, he went ahead and used Oathbreakers on me, which uh, really I'm finding a little bit laughable. Okay, yeah, I did go ahead and use my power of uh, fear right there. And I've deployed just the Banner of Terror. I should drop Horror fairly soon here, because I do need to get through damage and all that stuff. Uh, but as you can see, I hit this guy quite hard. Uh, I don't know why exactly. Maybe he doesn't have full audacity. Who knows what exactly. Uh, but this is a fight that I actually feel quite confident in. There I go and drop the Banner of Horror. That'll help me drop him more quickly. Uh, basically, for a captain, with a war leader, uh, right now you can pretty much fight him out in brawlers and not have to worry about it, especially because we now have that stun and shield bash. And uh, just be smart about applying that and you know, keep your uh, attention <laughs> to how much diminishing returns you put on all that stuff. And uh, this fight should wrap up fairly easily. Uh, the only thing to be really worried about is that he is going to have those cooldowns to prolong the fight, uh, he'll have strength and morale, he will have his last stand, stuff like that, things that will make it take just extra long. Uh, but uh, this isn't like an Isengard where you could have a Hands of Healing captain, which I don't even know, know if he is Hands of Healing, uh, and they could literally fight you to basically a standstill. Now the other thing that happened to uh, War Leaders on, since Update 9 is we've lost one of the best effects from Banner of Terror, and that is the reduced power regeneration. Uh, it's gotten replaced with this minus tactical mastery, which you know is great and all. It doesn't really do anything more than what you got out of having the uh, minus will that used to be on there. But uh, we've lost the extra effect from the will that is the power regen hit. So dropping Banner of Terror now does not uh, allow you to actually run other classes out of power more quickly by wiping their power pool just by making it so they don't gain their power as quickly. Uh, under the old Banner of Terror, he would probably be at the bottom of his power bar right now. Instead, he's only halfway through it. I'm a little over halfway, actually. So that's just something that you, you've got to be aware of, is you can't be as aggressive with Banner of Terror. It's now only useful as a device for lowering incoming damage. Uh, the one side effect that the tactical healing does have is it does lower outgoing healing that, well, tactical mastery I should say. It lowers the outgoing healing that can be put out. Uh, that's really it. Not a whole lot to be said for that. And now I go ahead, I hit the Menacing Roar and manage to nail Rockweathers there. But the, the thing is that I take a look at this and I decide that, you know, I'm really not worried about this. 
I feel confident that I could take down the captain and Rockwood at the same time. Now someone, uh, the defiler, goes ahead and attacks Rockwithers. So I'm going to be spending some time alternating between attacking the captain and actually throwing attacks on Rockwithers, particularly uh, Fracture, just because I want to keep his aggro on. Uh, now the captain goes ahead and he tries to disengage, which, you know, um, under normal circumstances and stuff, you know, it's nice of the Freeps not to do that, to attack while you got NPCs and stuff. But uh, personally, this is one, a situation where I'm really not worried about it, so I try to go ahead and tell him to uh, keep going, name my banner, don't stop, hoping he'll get the message. Uh, but he decides that he really doesn't want to. I think the other thing is that he realizes just how overmatched he actually is, and that, you know, this is his opportunity to walk away from the fight still in one piece, whereas if we do actually fight it out, he is going to get killed. So I'm still trying to stay on Dark Smoke a little bit, as I said, alternating, but uh, pretty soon here I will go ahead and let him go. But still, as you can see, your average captain, not going to be a whole lot of trouble for your average warrior. And there I actually hit another free food stand by just because I was targeting the tab key. Uh, yeah, Gilkal is there, right over there. He's a champion, who is actually going to be the, the next fight up. He's going to be war leader versus champion. And I will have more to say as soon as that gets started. So uh, let's go ahead and kick it off, because... Now I have gone ahead and stopped the going after Dark Smoke. All right, so Gil, uh, we go ahead and accept the fight and all that stuff. Uh, he does not have any super food buffs or anything. He's just got trail food going. Uh, uh, the outpost balance is pretty even and all that stuff. I do go ahead and start off with Banner of Terror. Banner of Horror should be following fairly shortly here. I'll go ahead and drop heal. Uh, now, Gil is running in Fervor Stance with, uh, I believe, a fair number of Martial Champion traits slotted in, because he does have a fair, quite a few effects that you get from being built into that blue line for champs. Uh, wasted my power of fear right there. Uh, there goes the bubble. Alright, uh, I should be going for a stun pretty soon here. Uh, the one thing I do want to say is that uh, I'm going for a strong offense against the champions. This has pretty much always been how I've tried to fight champions, is I try to give to a more <laughs> an attack and aggressive style, because they don't have defenses when they're in fervor stance. So putting on more melee damage, and, and they're trying to stay in melee anyway, I, I find that always works out better. Um, turtling up and into a full defensive R and stuff, you don't get nearly as much benefit out of that. Uh, in general, defensive aura, you only want to reserve that for opponents that are going to be able to keep you at a distance, that do a fair amount of damage, but that you, you can't close on very easily and put out damage on. So for a hunter, you can close with a hunter and then it becomes a, a race to the end of the morale bar, which is how those typically go, so you want to keep your aura command for that. But with a runekeeper, with uh, sometimes a lore master, with a minstrel, it's more important to have that extra mitigation because they can keep you at a distance and keep attacking more easily. Go ahead and induct the heal there, but I do get interrupted. I almost made it to the end of the bar there, so that was just uh, maybe I shouldn't have <laughs> run quite as far. You know, just a split second was the difference between making that heal and not which will come up a little bit later. Uh, now, I've let him get me below half of my morale bar, so now he's getting to take advantage of those, those changes to the champion's merciful strike that they got with Rohan. And really, this is a bad place to be, no matter what class you are. Because once they start getting that merciful strike off, their damage output, and particularly burst damage ability, it really goes through the roof and it's just a nasty, nasty place to be in. Now, shortly here, I shoot... Well, as soon as I get a, a crit, really, I'm going to be able to get off my quit, my quitters, and once that goes off, I will be back up in terms of how much health I've got. But until then, I am in trouble. And uh, actually, right now, I, I don't have a crit yet. I need to get one off 
if I'm gonna actually survive this. Uh, there we go, I finally got my crit, and there goes Quitters, but I'm still not out of the danger zone. I need more healing, which I should have gone ahead and hit my quit whining and fight there. Uh, there I'm just taking some massive crits, I'm already back down to 4,000, so you can see how much trouble getting into this party morale bar actually is. This is the, the thing you need to avoid as a war leader. I've actually dropped into commander stance and I'm trying to get out of here. I get my crit and uh, there goes one heal, there goes double heal, which will help me out. And menacing roar, so as soon as I get a chance I'm going to go ahead and double heal right here. I actually should have gone ahead and started with the crack the whip just so I could have gotten it off uh, a second earlier and not giving him a little bit more time to attack, but alas, I did not. Alright, go ahead and stun him. Uh, I should have started inducting a heal right there, but I did not. And there we go, he he, mi he missed his chance to interrupt it, fired while the animation to my <coughs> one heal was going, so he didn't interrupt either one of my heals, which is very fortunate for me. Uh, Unfortunately, that stun kept me from getting the crit, which would have allowed me to get a power of fear off and do another double heal. And there we go, I get the thing up, but menacing more fires instead of my heal, and I go down. So I'm really not happy about that. And I come back for a rematch. Now Gil's feeling confident, because hey, he beat me last time. But this time I've decided I'm going to go ahead and just fight him from commander stance at the beginning, see how this goes. I'm, this is the first major champion fight I've had since uh, the beginning of Rokan. It's when freeps were less powerful, hadn't figured out all the changes, hadn't gotten properly geared up and stuff. So uh, this is a more of a, a proper fight. Also, update 9, we've got instances out now, so we've got you know, instance and raid jewelry available, so this is more of the power level that Fruits will probably be at for the expansion, although they will keep on increasing slightly throughout the entire year or so before the next expansion and in level cap increase when we go to Eastern Rohan. Or is it West? No, we're in East. It's West. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing here that you need to pay attention to is I do something called playing against the human. And the thing that I do is I will start up inductions, especially once I get a little bit of distance between us, and then I will deliberately play him. And I will start the induction, and when he comes running up to interrupt, I move to the side and interrupt it myself. He just interrupts, skill fires off, and then I heal both of my inductions. Uh, sometimes even three inductions in a row because I've managed to get him to wipe out his only way to stop me. This is something I love. I'm so happy for the combat changes because of this. To be able to actually play head games with my opponent like this and draw serious tactical advantage of it. Very easy to point out. Um, an obvious advantage, actually. Uh, oh, it's so satisfying. Uh, there I was a little bit too slow and didn't manage to pull it off, but I do go right ahead and... Uh, no, actually, no, I did pull that off properly because I didn't have my trouble. Uh, as you can see, I moved a little too early right there. Uh, I'm, I'm way too used to champions being on a five-second uh, interrupt, and th that's going to be playing its own havoc with me at the beginning of this. Now, one thing is that I do have the defensive, or, well, actually, the point defense banner down to try to give myself some extra sturdiness, and that's something that I wasn't totally sure about how much defense I really needed. The other thing to note is that at the start of this fight, we both have uh, cooked food eaten, so that also skews things just because we both got extra uh, morale regen, the extra little ticks of regeneration that go off while you've got your food eaten, and uh, also extra power regen as well. So once those go down, then it's going to be a bit more proper. And also, we seem to be standing right on top of the actual map endpoint, based on where that reaver popped in. Go ahead and get my full heal off there, and then went ahead and moved, and actually took a shot at him. Alright, should be going for a double heal here. And uh, the double heal, very important to actually do this nowadays, just because you do need all the help you can get in some cases. And uh, let's be perfectly honest here, champions, they really 
do have a lot of uh, pros with next to no cons. I mean, very survivable, very high damage, got good sustained damage, got good spike damage. The only thing they don't really have is uh, range damage, and even then they do have a bow. It's nothing to uh, write home about, but it's nothing to sneeze at either. <laughs> Fortunately, I have healing. Actually, that is the one other thing about champions, is that they do get a lot of healing out of their... Um, <sighs> Whatever that heal's called. Bracing attack, that's the one. Uh, and just there I actually pulled off my maneuvering perfectly where I interrupted myself. And you actually hear the uh, dunk sound when they fire off clobber. Uh, you can actually hear an audio cue even though the uh, animation's not super distinct. And uh, the, the audio cue is what I personally listen for to tell if I actually did it right. Uh, there the timing, was, he was actually just using it to interrupt his animation when I started my heal, so that was just bad timing for me to hit the button at that particular point and got me interrupted. <laughs> Alright, the food buffs have worn out for both sides so now we're gonna be seeing who's really doing damage to who. Let's see if he's actually able to keep his morale bar up without the regeneration boosts of the uh, food ticking away and uh, if I'm able to do the same. Right now I'm actually putting some decent damage onto him and uh, this is something that later on I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my command post but I don't do that until way late in the fight and this fight is gonna drag on a long time. And after, the, after this fight, this fight ends in a draw, I'm just gonna give it away right now and uh, there I've taken him down half but if I was using the command post right now you're, you're looking at a lot more damage dealt to him. Now he has gone ahead and hit his um, controlled burn, or yeah, controlled burn is the name of it. And I, I still on cooldown for Banner of Terror, so I can't do a whole lot about this. But I can go ahead and just heal my way right through it. I mean, I've got my big cooldowns ready to go. And the only real issue that I personally have with this fight is in terms of what I need to be careful of when I'm fighting from commander's stance is remember to hit both banners and use them often and power management. Power management is really the key that's going to make or break you as the war leader because you need to keep enough power to be able to properly burst them when you get them low and uh, to bring them low in the first place. Uh, there went, I'm not sure which cooldown that was in particular or if it was just a morale pot but uh, he did something that gave him a couple thousand morale <laughs> And as you can see, I'm only at 1,000 power right now. Uh, a big part of that is because I did have that point defense down. And the point defense doesn't give me my power regeneration boost, which I'm very used to having from the command post. Command post has been how I have fought for many, many ranks now. And Gil thinks that he's just going to be able to call it there, but I've just switched banners, and the thing I really want to see right now, because you know, I'm, I was experimenting at the time of this fight, is, you know, I've been doing just fine with having the point defense out. How do I do if I switch it over to the command post? And, uh, well, right now in this situation, if I had another thousand power or so, I would be in a good position to actually get pretty aggressive and try to go for a kill. He's at half morale, and yeah, he's got the bubble up, but that's not going to last forever. And once that's down, then I'm going to be chipping back at his health bar proper, which I'm already doing. And, you know, I could potentially kill the champion. Now, the one thing that I could have done besides using the command post uh, much earlier in the fight is I have these better power potions, which I completely forgot about during the entire fight itself. But I could have been popping those things and getting you know, a few hundred extra power per potion every two minutes and that would have made enough of a difference to actually have the power to go for uh, more aggression. I mean, right now I'm at 500 power. I don't have enough to be able to go for a kill, but at the same time, I <laughs> I really need to be going for a kill if I'm going to actually get anywhere. Instead, it's just going to get a stalemate. His bracing attack will come off, cool down more, and he'll use it and build more morale up, all that kind of stuff. 
it just keeps the fight prolonged. But uh, what I'm going to do here is heal myself up, try to get quitters off cooldown to get the power from that, try to be conservative with my power use while still trying to keep them at least a little bit lower, and use my banners and put, when I put those down, that's when I want to try to put a dent in them because the uh, loss of mitigation, particularly from the Banner of Horror, is what really allows me to put a good dent in him. And that crit for 1000 was taken away by that untimely stun, which I'm very sad and disappointed about. But oh well. Uh, one other thing that I do need to learn about for my Warrior is I do not use Purge at all. I don't even remember it's on my bar, usually. It's a little hidden over there on the equals button. but. Uh, Using Purge could potentially be helpful in some situations because you know, it will let me get out of some extra crowd control with my rank 10 more beer. So there are definitely times where I should actually go ahead, hit Purge, and clear up CC that I don't need to sit through. So, yeah, we're stuck here. I don't have enough power to actually finish him off. And that's mostly because of not using the right power bots and not having command posts out soon enough. Uh, the other things to say for this is I am in my standard trait build. So if I wanted to be more effective, make sure I was really going to kill him, then I could trait for a full proper soloing, which would give me empowering, which is extra power regeneration and extra tactical mastery. So I'd heal harder, I would hit even harder with my shouts, uh, toss in the damage boost on top of that for another 3% damage going out, and use command post from the beginning, you're looking at a dead elf. Because, you know, fighting from commander's stance, using R of, co of uh, command for the extra melee damage, you can see just how effective this is. And the one thing I definitely do show with this whole fight here is that you do not need to be fully turtled up. Uh, you can get away with having the command post out and uh, you'll do just fine. But the big things to remember are stay you know, properly defensive. Don't let yourself go below half health. Uh, don't fight champions in brawler stance. That's you know, not going to end very well for you. Uh, if they're not so well ge geared, if you can outmaneuver them or something, uh, if you have a discernible advantage over them in some way, then yeah, go ahead and do Brawler's Stance, capitalize on that, kill them quicker. But for the most part, fight from Commander's Stance, be patient, outlast them, slowly chip away. They do, do a, get a fair bit of healing with uh, the way that things work nowadays, but let's be honest here, you're going to still be putting out more damage than they're healing up if you've got the appropriate command post and the appropriate aura on it, and keep yourself moving and actually doing damage when you need to. Now, right now I'm trying to actually get a, enough power up to actually put a, some real damage into him. Uh, not working out so well right here, but I, I'm back up to 1000. Unfortunately his morale bar is getting higher, and I think he did just use uh, why can't dire need to actually go ahead and get it back up? Remember everybody, after you've managed to pull off your multiple heals and have your downtime where everything's on cooldown, move. Don't just stand in one spot. Sitting targets are called sitting targets for a reason. Stay mobile. Actually, that little sequence just there shows you just how important Banner of Horror is for this whole matchup. Which, 
you know, if you don't have the Banner of Horror, they will outheal you. If you're deploying that thing every two and a half minutes, their morale bar goes down. Also, I was being pretty conservative in terms of how much attack I was doing and how much power I was spending on melee skills and also on shouts. Okay, so now I'm not even using Banner of Terror, mostly because it's not really going to do anything I need. Actually, I think pretty soon here I'm going to rename my command post and just call it off. And yeah, you know, I'm talking a lot about how I could potentially beat this guy and stuff, even though I don't actually kill him in this particular video or in these rounds that I fought with him. But uh, let, let's let's be honest about this whole situation here. You know, even though I've got some decent advantages and uh, some good ideas on how to actually go about this, you know, this is a pretty matched fight and pretty even, and I like that. But it's an even fight against a rank 10 war leader. Uh, there goes the, the free burn <laughs> raid, uh, which at this point is only about a fellowship, maybe a little bit more, uh, but it grows throughout the rest of the evening on that particular night. But rank 10 war leader, if you look at guys that are much lower ranked, it's not going to be balanced, it's going to be skewed in the champion's favor. If you look into the much lower ranked guys, I mean, like when I rank 4 war leader, rank 5s and stuff, they are going to have a prayer against the champion that comes after them. Uh, if he's well ge geared and knows what he's doing. Hey, you need to be ranked 10 to match up against a guy that can play a champion decently. So, yeah, just looking at that whole side of things, it, it does seem like there is some definite room for improvements in terms of the class balance. I mean, I'm happy to have it balanced against me, but at the same time I recognize that that's not the majority of the Edmores are at rank 10 and such. So really, balance shouldn't be aimed at those green ranks. It just shouldn't be. Even if they are attained pretty quick these days. Anywho, that's all for this time. I Hopefully I will be able to get some more videos out much sooner. I should be playing a bit more frequently in the, the next couple weeks and stuff, assuming that I don't get myself distracted by playing other games entirely. Right. Well, that's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there, everybody. Ugmog is out.